Vladimir Barsuk, director of the Cheplegin Siberian Aeronautical Research Institute, SIBNIA, informed TASS that a prototype of the AN-2 turboprop aircraft, which is outfitted with the TVD-10B engine, is anticipated to be completed by the summer of 2025. He said, SIBNIA is working on the possibility of installing the already operational TVD-10B engine on the AN-2. The prototype is planned to be completed by the summer of this year, after which the project's prospects can be evaluated. In an interview with TASS, Vladimir Skoropupov, chairman of the Moscow branch of the Association of Polar Explorers, stated that the most logical approach to guaranteeing aviation connectivity in Russia's Arctic zone and remote regions of Siberia and the Far East is to restore the AN-2 fleet. The Soviet-era AN-2 is to be replaced by the light multipurpose aircraft LMS-901 Baikal, but its delivery dates have been repeatedly postponed. Anton Alikhanov, the Minister of Industry and Trade, stated in September 2024 that the initial five regional Baikal aircraft would be delivered in 2026. Skoropupov says, It is a mistake to assume that Baikal will completely replace the AN-2 across the entire country. To ensure that Baikal operates in Arctic winter conditions in the future, extensive testing will be required, which will take several years. Barsuk, the head of Sib and IA, which is currently at work on the AN-2, also clarified that the re-engineered AN-2 is not intended to serve as a substitute for the Baikal. Rather, it is considered a backup option during the delay in Baikal's production timeline, he explained. What is the likelihood of the AN-2 fleet being restored? Skoropupov has stated that there are at least four facilities in Russia that are capable of re-engining the AN-2. One of these facilities is located at the Motor Aircraft Engine Complex in Omsk, while the other three are located within the technical maintenance and repair structures of DOSEF. Yuri Petrov, the founder of Motor and an honorary polar explorer, stated to TASS that the plant's production facilities could restore approximately 50 aircraft annually with adequate financing. An aircraft consists of an engine, a propeller, and the airframe itself. The main task now is to ensure the availability of spare parts and to train qualified personnel, engineers, technicians, mechanics, welders, turners, and other specialists, he emphasized. Petrov also endorsed Barsuk's proposal to install the TVD-10B engine in the AN-2. I fully support replacing the engine with a turboprop. It is, of course, more modern, he added. Additionally, Motor has a cooperation agreement with Sibni A. Skoropupov believes that manufacturers will be required to increase the production capacity of AN-2 spare parts, primarily for the AS-62IR engine, to ensure the aircraft's airworthiness until an alternative engine is secured. Anton Korin, the general director of the Center for Strategic Transport Development, has verified that there are already effective projects underway to restore and modernize the AN-2 which includes re-engineing efforts. He maintains that these projects are progressing in parallel with the development of the Baikal aircraft. Moreover, the modernized AN-2 does not fall into the same category as Baikal and, as Corin clarified, does not compete with it as it remains widely used in Russia's Arctic region. Even before this, there were efforts to replace and enhance the AN-2. The Antonov AN-2 has been a long-standing challenge, with numerous attempts made over the years to replace it. One of the earliest endeavors was the AN-3 project, which was initiated in the 1970s with the objective of replacing the AN-2 with a turboprop-powered version. However, it encountered sizable development challenges and was not extensively adopted as a result of high costs and international tensions. Another attempt was the AN-2MS upgrade, which was proposed by Sibinier, this upgrade involved the replacement of the existing AN-2 engine with a TPE-331 engine, which enabled the use of less expensive fuel. Nevertheless, the enhancement was not widely embraced, as its cost exceeded $1.3 million. In the 1990s, the Let L-410, an aircraft designed by Czechoslovakia, was also considered as a potential replacement for the AN-2. However, it was larger and more expensive than what was sought for a direct AN-2 successor. In addition to these projects, the PZLM-15 Belfagor was a unique jet-powered biplane that was designed mainly for agricultural purposes, such as crop dusting. 
There was only one jet-powered biplane, an agricultural aircraft, that was ever manufactured. The high operational costs necessitated the construction of only 20 units, despite the initial plan to manufacture 3,000. Production concluded in 1981. The PZ-LM-15 LM-15 was not a direct replacement for the AN-2 in all duties, rather it was specifically designed for agricultural tasks. Additionally, there have been initiatives to modernize the AN-2 by substituting its radial engine with turboprops. For instance, the AN-200, which is powered by a Motor Sitch MS-14 turboprop, was created by Antonov, which is now located in Ukraine. These endeavors underscore the challenge of identifying an appropriate successor for the AN-2, which is both adaptable and durable. Now, do you think AN-2 is irreplaceable? Let us know in the comments. Please like and share our videos and subscribe to our channel. Please also take membership in our channel to encourage us.